Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to write a hello program in the PL360 programming language, which maybe some of you may have never even heard of. Uh, PL360 is a language from the uh, early 70s. It was created by a genial professor Niklaus Wirt, um, who is a professor at a Swiss professor and computer scientist at uh, the university in Switzerland. And uh, he is famous uh, for having invented the Pascal programming language, as well as, uh, I think, Modula and Oberon. So this would be, I think, the four languages that he invented, PL360 first, then Pascal, then Modula, and then Oberon. And he also is famous for having uh, uh, engineered the Lilith uh, workstation that ran, I think, Modula. Um, it was the first time that somebody had engineered a, a, a workstation to run a certain programming language. And the next workstation by Steve Jobs is kind of a take that took that a little bit further. Um, PL360 is in a way kind of like a, like C. It's a it's it's in concept. It's like C. It's a mix of assembler and high level programming language, which by the way also the IBM high level um, assembler kind of tried to replicate uh, 40 years later. Or 30 years later and uh, and so as such it's very interesting however the program the the manuals for the language are not very well written um, Niklas Wirt was not a good documenter for his own um, computer work and so all the textbooks etc are very very difficult to read so I think I'll make a, a hello world program here for people who are interested in seeing how to program in PL360 which is I think still an interesting language for today um, and it's just, uh, I think, historically interesting to do a video on that because not much work is left about PL360 out there on the internet. So um, let's go. I prepared here a little a job control language that will compile, link, and go um, a PL360 program. Where is it? Here. So this is uh, one job card here. And then we uh, execute uh, PL360 compile and go. Um, there's no linking here and then um, we print out to sysprint and we can uh, here the source code is going to go in here we use for the for the uh, execution step we need to provide a library the pull 360 library and uh, and then we can optionally give in some uh, input to the program here through the sys input card and this step here and that's about it very simple we could probably write all of this in one line or at least two lines um, but let's go and let's start writing a program. I like to have a lot of empty lines, so I'm gonna create some empty space here and then um, begin. As uh, here, here you start to recognize some of the ideas that uh, Professor Vert had, um, because the begin statement also figures prominently in Pascal. Uh, and then here we can write the end statement and with a with a uh, full stop uh, and then we just say this this is a hello world program uh, friends hello world okay so now Specify a function, register, and then something like that. Oops, misspelled function here. Function. Uh, and then we say array. We, here we define an array of 133 bytes. Why is that 133? Because the printers on uh, the 1401 printer on the mainframe, it prints 133, 32 bytes plus one control byte on the left. So it's 133 uh, byte input. So we call this input. And we just define a buffer here, basically. Ah. And then we well, let's define another buffer, array 103, the output buffer. So we can write stuff. 
We can maybe also reuse the same buffer, but just to make that a little cleaner. And now we begin the main program while register zero still gets, let's say we read from the input. So we would say we get an input card. That's kind of a macro then read. So And then we say begin R zero. Okay, so we can we, we can just print out what we read from the input. I think that would be a good way. Begin uh, input write. Write means write to the output. And then we just say end. Um, but then we need to say here, hello world. Um, so let's see again here. Let me see if I've done this so right. Begin. Oh, we need to define card. So they just say here, byte card sin input. So it will be based on this input array with a length of 23 um, and then array 133 byte output equals uh, one character so that's 133 of length like this one and then while register zero okay I can make this it's it's a free form language so you can do stuff like this um, read and then do begin yeah so then we just take out whatever we read and we write it um, from the input out to the output so this we can try to run this this should work we go to held output oh <laughs> the maximum condition code zero did not expect that so let's go look what was it uh herc zero a Yeah, this went perfectly fine. So let's look at the output here. Um, the compiler announces itself. Again, this is a compiler from the early 70s or maybe late 60s even. Um, here is our code. And here's our output. Hello world. <laughs> so uh, this is a very interesting language because you can actually, just like in the programming language C, you can address registers directly. I don't know if you knew, but in C you can actually um, base variables on registers um, by adding the register word to definition. And this is kind of the same. Um, so it's a mix of, 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 ass of assembler and high level language. It's a system programming language. And um, it's famous for having written the Stanford uh, research database, it was completely written in it. And, uh, and then later on it was ported to another language, but uh, uh, the Stanford, at the center of Stanford's ability to do research effectively was this uh, research database. I don't remember the name of it. Maybe some of you will remember and post comments below this video, uh, but it was completely written in this language. And so it is certainly a very capable language. Uh, it's very fast because it's it's uh, assembler-like, and um, but uh, some of the things you can do here are very interesting. Obviously, in in the new assembler in the mainframe, the high-level assembler, you also have structure programming. You have if uh, then constructs. Uh, you have case constructs, you have switch constructs. Um, so you can do a lot of stuff uh, in high-level assembler there as well. But um, but this I think. Uh, 30 years earlier is a very nice, very smart implementation of an assembler. Basically, it's an assembler. That's how you have to look at it. And uh, and uh, written by uh, Professor Wirt from uh, from this university in Switzerland. Great job. And uh, I I it's not easy to read the manual and learn it, but I'm getting the heck out of it. I'm learning more and more, and I kind of like it because it's really assembler, but it's more readable for people than assembler. Um, 
so this is it um, wrote hello world in the pl360 language you won't find a whole lot a whole lot of stuff out there on the internet especially not in video form so i'm glad i made this video uh, let me know what your thoughts are about this language and other um, languages in the mainframe let me know what you intend to do on the mainframe and uh, if you haven't headed over yet to sign our petition to get ibm to release to us the um, MVSXA and VMXA operating systems to the community, to the enthusiasts and uh, uh, people who study mainframes and, uh, and learn mainframes, then uh, now would be a good time to do it. Uh, I'll put the link below this, of, the, of this petition below in the description below the video you're watching. I will also post the whole um, code here, the whole source code, including the JCL, in the description below this video. Um, I would appreciate very much if you press on the like button uh, for this video, the thumbs up button. And also uh, I would uh, encourage you to consider subscribing to the Moshex Mainframe channel to get notified of future videos. Thank you for watching and goodbye.